Hi, so recently Ben Shapiro had this um, discussion, uh, stroke debate, um, at Berkeley, a bit of a controversial um, lecture he gave there for um, Republicans or Conservatives or whatever. Um, and uh, one of these, uh, you know, college liberals stands up and asks him about abortion. And let's see what he says. So why exactly do you think a first trimester fetus has moral value? Pretty simple question. Let's see what Mr. Shapiro uh, asks, answers with first so of all. So the real question is where do you draw the line, right? The problem is anytime you draw any line other than the inception of the child, you end up drawing a false line that can also be applied to people who are adults. Uh, no. <clears throat> um, if a fully sentient adult is on somebody else's body, say it's a piggyback or something like that, um, then the person whose body they're upon uh, is perfectly well within their rights to use whatever means necessary to uh, remove that um, person who is on and occupying their body. So yeah, irrespective of age or sentience or any state of being or anything else, um, you're perfectly well within your rights to take somebody off your body at, uh, at any point you want because of course it's your body, um, it's the most obvious piece of, of private property, um, your personhood, and, and nobody has a right um, to be on your body or in it or, or even touching it um, without your complete uh, consent uh, and agreement. So either human life has intrinsic value or it doesn't. I think we both agree that adult human life has intrinsic value. Uh, no, intrinsic value. Hmm. Well, value actually requires the existence of a valuer. Um, so I think that this could be some sort of crypto-religious thing here that, you know, God loves us all or something like that which, of course, um, you're entitled to believe. Um, but from my own perspective, I do not value all human life. Um, there's definitely people who I would wish to be dead, and I think the world would be better off without them. I think of terrorists, uh, child molesters, uh, warmongers. Um, you know, you, you could, I mean, you could just go on. Um, there are people who we can have a negative value for their life. So, um, no, don't agree with Ben on that one. I believe that sentience um, has, is what gives something moral value. So, the questioner points out that he thinks sentience uh, is what gives uh, a life moral value. Unfortunately, he doesn't explain uh, why he thinks that, and I think the argument's quite easy to understand. Um, sentience means that a a being is aware of its own uh, individual existence and and as, as is aware of itself as an actor in the world and it re requires a certain amount of cognitive ability uh, to be sentient you, you need a certain level of uh, brain development um, and, and high order uh, functioning in the brain for it um, and you know there's discussion among biologists amongst which species do and do not have sentience and so on and so forth um, but if, a, if something isn't sentient, I mean, if it's like a brick or, or maybe a worm, um, which are definitely not sentient, um, then those things do not uh, value their own lives they're, because they're not aware of their existence. They do not have any um, sense of valuing their own lives. That doesn't mean that they don't uh, want to survive um, or don't have drives to survive and so on and so forth. Um, but without the awareness of your own existence, you do not have an invested interest um, as as a uh, conscious entity in your in your continued existence, and for that reason, if something's not sentient, um, then other actors do not have to uh, give moral consideration, um, because moral consideration requires that the uh, person or, or other entity um, actually cares about its existence. So we we shouldn't really care. Um, about the existence of organisms that don't actually care about their own existence. So what happens next? When you're, so when you're asleep, can I stab you? I'm still considered sentient when I'm asleep. Okay, at this point, um, I think the question has um, really hammered Ben. Sentience is an ability, like the ability to walk or the ability to talk, 
And just because you're exercising it doesn't mean that you don't have it. Um, so there you go. Um, so let's see what happens okay, next. If you are in a coma from which you may awake. Can I stab you? So Ben again is, is trying to get into a sort of a state of mind thing. A person in a coma is like a person asleep, but a little bit more uncertain. When a person's asleep, uh, we know that they're still sentient, or we're pretty sure that they are, uh, because they were prior to going to sleep. Um, they may talk in their sleeps um, or move in ways which indicate that they're aware of what's going on. Um, so we can be sure that somebody who's asleep is probably still sentient, and sleep doesn't result in a loss of sentience because we wake up and we're sentient afterwards. Um, and also we have dreams, so we're actually personally aware of our sentience during sleep. So um, the, the questioner's point isn't broken here. When it comes to coma, um, let's continue. Well then, uh, no. <laughs> I'm glad you answered that because I have no interest in actually murdering that's, you. That's, but that's still potential sentience. And there we have it. The question has got it. A person who's in a coma is still um, not potentially sentient, but actually could be sentient. Uh, and we don't know. We're not clear whether the person is still sentient or not. Um, they could be consciously aware of what's going around them, but unable to respond. So what we do in this situation is we give them the benefit of the doubt because they had the capacity and they may still have that capacity and we're not aware of it. The same cannot be said for a fetus. Um, we can be pretty 100% sure that a fetus is not sentient and not really aware, you know, not aware of itself and its existence. So is actually not consciously uh, desiring to continue going on with living. Um, so at this point, really, the questioner has has destroyed Ben. Um, but as you, I mean, as you can see, Ben sort of blurts his way through this, um, and yeah. It doesn't look too good. I agree. It is potential sentience. You know what else is potential sentience? Being a fetus. No, being a fetus is having potential sentience in the future, but not right now. Being unconscious is having the potential for sentience right now, and that's absolutely a critical difference. The issue I have with that, though, is that um, in, if, if I'm in a coma and I'm not like doing anything to anyone i'm not causing any issues amongst the world whereas a, a, an, un, an unwanted child may or may not be a burden to people okay, whether 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 well here the debates diverged and now the questioner um who seems to perhaps not be aware that he's, he's just destroyed ben uh, ventures off in, in into consequentialism um, and it's it's pretty futile i mean you, you need to discuss uh, the the moral uh, um, an ethical uh, position and, and simply make the point that a fetus is, is occupying somebody else's body and that re that's really the end of the story. People who are unwanted, right? I mean, there are lots of people's parents who are unwanted, right? We're a bunch of college students. Uh, you know? <laughs> um, well, Ben says there's a bunch of people who are unwanted, but yet at the beginning of um, his points he said that uh, all life has intrinsic value. So he, he seems to be con contradicting himself the, the, the here. The problem is that now, so now you're shifting the argument, right? Before you were making the argument based on the intrinsic value of a life based on sentience, and now you're talking about the level of burden that somebody presents as a separate moral argument, okay? I don't believe that you being a burden on somebody is justification for them killing you. Uh, a burden, well, <laughs> yeah, it depends what the burden is. If it's you being physically on somebody else's body, um, then yes, I think you are fully within your rights to remove that person uh, by any means necessary and uh, you know I know it's a bit of a a lifeboat uh, scenario kind of argument um, but you know if you're piggybacking on somebody else and you won't get off um, and I've talked to you and I've tried to reason with you I think it's okay to hit you and if you won't get off when I hit you I think it's okay to stab you and if you won't get off when I stab you I think it's okay if I shoot you and I'm pretty sure if somebody jumped on Ben Shapiro's back um, and started to occupy his body and he didn't want you there um, he'd be pretty quickly resorting to using some force to get you off. Uh, so this is all hypocrisy. Um, the anti-abortion debate is simply not winnable uh, by any reasonable arguments, and at least as far as I'm concerned, it's settled. As a general rule. But hey, you know... Uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but I appreciate you. Yeah, uh, no, so, you know, Ben gets a lot of support from the audience, and it, it comes away as looking like the questioner uh, lost, 
Um, but he didn't. Uh, he really didn't lose at all. Um, he could have made his case a bit better, but you know, probably a bit nervous, or, or perhaps he just didn't know the arguments too well. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I hope you uh, agree with me. Um, and bye for now.